Okay, so quite a while ago, I went past an interesting fact. It says that when you look in the mirror, you see yourself ten times more beautiful. And to me that was quite intriguing, because when I look in the mirror, I see those extra pounds, I see the belly fat, I see the acne scars, and I start thinking, what if? Plastic surgery is an option. I mean, what if fillers suit me? And are you guys familiar with Tom and Jerry? Do you know when Tom runs past the mirror and then he goes back? I have always been Tom. At the end of a hectic day, looking in the mirror and being like, oh my God, I look like a complete, absolute, total mess. My hair is messed up, makeup is all over, if there's any. My clothes are in the best fit though, and those extra pounds. And at that moment, I start building up excuses to each and every person I came across throughout the whole day. Well, maybe I received that rejection earlier because I don't look representable enough. Well, maybe those gossips were about those extra pounds and maybe people were staring on the street because I look like a mess. And by then, it's no longer an external battle that you're fighting. It's an internal one which is far, far worse. And I am pretty sure that each person must have had some tough time throughout a certain phase in his life. So I decided to investigate it, to investigate into the matter. So I prepared my hot chocolate with marshmallows with marshmallows on top. I'm sorry. And I asked my bestest best friend by that time, which was Google, I suppose, how can I be appealing to everybody? And with everybody, I don't necessarily mean a partner, nor a crush, nor a potential best friend, nor family members, nor parents, nor a manager, nor an employer. I meant them all. And to be honest, I was waiting for the secret recipe. I was waiting for the one, two, three, four, five, shoot, you're underneath the spotlight shining bright. And I was waiting for the one, two, three, four, five, six, damn, you are the most appealing person in the room. What I found by then was quite disappointing because I didn't find the secret recipe. What I found, I figured out that people could see through you. And don't you dare believe anybody who could tell you that people cannot see through you because they count for fact. But people cannot see through the real you, they see through the concept of you, the idea of you. And who builds that? It's you as well. So it's more of a loop that starts and ends with you. So if you regard yourself as somebody who's confident, if you regard yourself as somebody who's worthy, then this is how people are going to see you. And if you see yourself as somebody who's far from confident, unworthy, ugly, then this is how people are going to see you. I am pretty sure that we go through tough times, plenty of phases in our lives, and do you know when you're feeling really down and there comes the person and tells you, hey, you look beautiful. And you'll be like, ah, oh, thank you. And there comes this very special person and tells you, hey, I think you look really beautiful today. And you'll be like, oh my God. And before you know it, you are head over heels. And before you know it, you start compromising, sacrificing, sacrificing, compromising, and stir on a repeat and before you know it you're trapped big time and there comes the question well is this the virgin that the five-year-old me would have loved to see and if the answer is no then you shall take one step backward and ask yourself an important question well is this the right path to where i aspire to be and if the answer is no then you shall take two steps backward and ask yourself the most crucial question well, is this reversible? And if the answer is yes, and I promise it's always going to be a yes, then you shall cut all those ropes, tying you to toxic relationships, to awful people, to bad company and bad habits. Because you know what? We are fighting battles each and every day, and we don't need nobody to tie us from the waist and pull us backward, because it's taking our all to get those tiny steps further. So let me take you on a journey to my very own childhood. How many of you guys are only children? Do we have any only child in the room? Interesting, okay.
Okay, so I was an only child till the age of 10. And you shall imagine the 10 year old me standing in my room looking up there and being like, hey God, I kindly, desperately need a sibling. Because you know what? All my friends and family members, they have people to hang out with, but for me, it's really boring. It's just my parents and I at home. The 10 year old me who believes that miracles do happen because they do for fact. Mom showed up a couple of months later and she was like, hey there, I'm pregnant! And you know when you realize what have I just done? But it said you keep the poker face on, so I was like, oh yeah? And she was like, yeah, do you want a guy or a girl? And I was like, okay, cool. I asked for it anyhow. So I think girl is a good idea. I mean, the short skirts, the braids, the hairstyles and everything. And I was like, cool, I'll go for a girl. A couple of months later, she was like, hey there, you're having a baby brother. And I was like, seriously? Did I even ask for that? Fast forward to the delivery day, and fast forward to two more years of plenty of issues. Sometimes we're draining and intolerable. And let me tell you that throughout this phase, I transferred from this spoiled brat to just another person. Just another person in the classroom, just another person in the sports club, and more importantly, just another person in my very own house. Which was quite heartbreaking. Because you know when you're an only child, you receive your parents' full, undivided attention. And at some point, you feel like everything's split into two in a way that doesn't really seem fair to you. So, I was like, okay, cool, this looks really unfair, but whatsoever. Fast forward to the time that my friends and I decided to join robotics. So we took the courses, we trained really, really hard, we prepared for the competition, and there was the big day. My team got the fourth position, which was quite disappointing. And I still recall mom's call, and she was like, hey, Thor, how did it go? And I was like, it went awful, my team did really bad, we're not qualifying, we're not traveling nowhere. Needless to mention that I was sobbing, and I'd really appreciate it if you could come and pick me up. And I still recall her reply by then, and she's sitting here. Hey, Thar, and I was like, yeah. And she was like, I think you've got to grow up. And I was like, really? Seriously? Of course, you have somebody else to take care of. It's not just me anymore. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Do your thing. All right, no problem. I will do the best I could, and you just do your thing. And I still remember that I spent two to four months of the worst time of my life. It was draining, it was a really tough experience. And throughout this time, I had the great question mark. Why am I blaming each and every person about things that I need to take responsibility for? Why aren't I responsible about my successes and more importantly, my failures? So I was like, cool, I shall try the responsibility part sometime. Fast forward to the time that we prepared for a greater competition. We did our best. We trained really, really hard. We went to the nationals. We got the first nationals and then we went to the internationals. We got the third world championship. And then we came back, we trained for the next year. We did our best, we trained really hard, we went to the nationals, we got the first nationals, and then we went to the internationals, things didn't really go well back in Germany, whereas we ended up with the first super team. Anyway, when we came back, it was kind of spectacular phase. Not because I was the best person on the team, because to be honest, I was far from it. You could even regard me as the worst, but because. When we came back, we were hosted on radio, on TV, we were asked to give plenty of presentations in the Ministry of the Youth, in plenty of private corporations. And I still recall post each interview with my parents and family, telling me, hey, Thor, we're so proud of you. And people being like, hey, you're making the family really proud. And I was like, really? Seriously, what am I doing? What, what is it, the extra that I'm doing? And I still remember a time when we were giving a presentation, I was standing on the stage and people were sitting down with eager, sparkling eyes, waiting for something that I have and they don't. And that felt quite amusing. 
They were waiting for me to inspire, I suppose. They were waiting for me to say something. They were so eager. And for one perfect moment, I was underneath the spotlight. Not because I was the only person in the room, because there were plenty of other people, but because I was another person in the room. I was another worthy person in the room. I was another person of an impact, of goal, of whatsoever, of plenty of stuff, of aspirations, everything. And I still recall that day when I came back home and I was quite intimate with my baby brother. I was like, hey, do I love you a bit extra today or what? And this stuff. And for another perfect moment, I felt like I'm okay. I do not mind being the other person in my very own house. Because I know for a fact that I'm another person who matters. I'm not here to give you a motivational speech, nor am I here to tell you, hey there, do it the way I did it, because I believe I have reached nowhere to where I aspire to be. But I'm just daring each and every person in the room to please realize what is it that you're passionate about. I mean, even if you don't know it now, there's no shame in this, but the shame is if you don't do everything you can to realize it. Is it music? Is it art? Is it science, mathematics, or even space? And let me tell you, the people are going to come and be like, hey, I know you can do it, but it's going to be draining, it's going to be hectic, and I'm not really sure if psychologically you could handle this. And by then, I just need you to stand on the solid ground and be like, hey, I know I can't do it because I came for fact. And I know it's going to be draining, I know it's going to be consuming. I know it's going to take every single bit and piece in me, and I am willing to give it my all. Because you know what? At the end of the road is where I aspire to be. And nobody can promise you an easy pay, stress free road to your goals. But I can promise you that the obstacles you face and the times you struggle are what strengthens you and introduces you to a better version of yourself. So be prepared, please. And I shall tell you that if we have a mirror right now on the stage, I'd be like, hey, you look beautiful, you look confident, you look worthy, and more importantly, you look like somebody who's not waiting for approval to realize that he is on the right path. And let me tell you that I regard this as the best time to prepare your hot chocolates, marshmallows on top, topped in bed in this cold weather. Realize your self-worth and build the concept of you. Thank you so much.